Okay, guys, we just talked about um, spell checks and stuff like that. Um, so now we're going to go on to um, uh, printing ASCIIs and backups. Okay? So you can be anywhere in the Eclipse document and press Alt O and it'll bring up your uh, printing options. Okay? So, and that's what it looks like. This is what your printing option looks like, you know, and it tells you, you know, what you want to do, your setup. So if you have two or three different printers, you know, which I do, I have one at home, I have one at the office, so, you know, and I have an old one that is still on the computer or whatever, so, you know, you can go to setup, um, you know, and change your different, uh, you know, if you want to change it to a PDF file, uh, you can change it. You can change that certain document to a PDF file if you're going to uh, email it to somebody or something like that. So it'll put it in a PDF file already. Put it in your documents, and then when you want to put it, you put it as an attachment. Or you can, you know, choose whichever uh, printer that you have. So then, you know, you guys know about printing, right? Different properties. Um, And then you can do stuff through file manager, you know, and that's going to be all of your backup stuff, uh, doing ASCII's backup, any of that stuff. Now let's see how to print with Total Eclipse. Total Eclipse. Within Eclipse, the option to print will be grayed out. If you don't, will be grayed out. If you don't have a document open. However, you don't have to open Eclipse just to print up an entire document. Wherever you see an Eclipse transcript icon, perhaps on the recent documents list, or some shortcut that you created, you can right-click to open a context menu and select Print to just print up the entire document. You see what it's telling you there? You don't have to open the document necessarily. If you know that you just want to print it, you know, you can just right-click it on the document, and just print from there. By default, Total Eclipse presumes to print your entire document. Although you can use the current button if you only want to print the page where your cursor is currently located. If you understand what it's telling you right there? So say you want to do it in stages. You know, you're editing, you know, whatever, and it's like, you know what, God almighty, I'm just, I'm tired of editing. I want to proofread for a while. So I'm going to go make a sandwich. Uh, and I want to print from the current, from where I was currently, down, that's where you would do it. So you do the current, it'll put the page, print it from there, then you can, you know, proofread or whatever after you eat your sandwich. It's like, you know what, I just needed to do something different. So instead of editing, I wanted to proofread for a while, so I proofread that. Now I'm ready to go back to start editing, then you go back to start editing. Make sense? your file is containing several volumes, you can print specific volumes or print specific pages within a... You see what it's telling you right here? So if you just want to print specific pages, you can. Okay? It's always going to tell you all. Whenever you bring up the print opt option, it's always going to tell you all because it figures that you want to print the whole document. You don't have to, but you need to come in here on the pages and tell it what you want to do. Well, you know what? Um, I did the document, but one through five came out kind of blurry. 30 came out blurry, and then 50 to the end of the document came out blurry. So if you just want one page, just put 30 in there, and it's going to print page 30. It's not going to print 30 pages. You understand what I'm saying? Page 30. It's going to print page 30. So it's asking you what you want to do, the pages. So when you put 30 in there and just 30, it's not printing 1 through 30. It's printing page 30. If you want it to print page 1 through 30, then you have to put 1-30. And it'll do it through the end. Maybe it's 99 pages, but
but you just want to proof maybe the first 30 pages or whatever, then you just put one through 30, okay? But say you've already done one through 30, or you've done one through 53, okay? Or one through 52. You've already proofread that, and the document's 99 pages. Well, you know what? Now I want to print the rest of the document and proofread it. 53 dash tells it to the end. You don't have to put the specific number of pages. So you don't have to go in there, oh man, I forgot how many pages it was. Was it 98? Was it 97? Was it 99? I can't remember. And now you're fumbling around doing the Alt G, trying to go to the end of the document to see exactly how many pages it was. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is put 53 dash and it tells it, that's what tells it, go to the end. So it doesn't matter how many pages it is, it's gonna to go to the end, okay? Uh -huh. Single volume, draft printing is also available. This would omit your text box and footer, but it would include comment lines. So it's a way for a scopist and reporter to print out the messages they might be exchanging. Do you understand what it's telling you right there? So if you wanna do a draft, you know, Ours, through the uniform format rules, has to have a box around the whole thing. Then it has your little footer down here that says David Zarati, Auxiliary Court Reporter, uh, my address, telephone number, blah, 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 all of that stuff. Well, you can admit all that stuff if you want to save some of your toner, you know, whatever, and do a draft print. Um, and it, it'll omit all of that stuff. And just do the, the text of what you need. Okay, so it's... You know, you don't want to do that on your final draft. You just want to do it if you're going to just proofread it, okay? A draft printout can also include a watermark. That might have the text draft or do not copy. But remember that your watermark text will only appear if the darkness is set above zero. Choose the darkness that works best for you. Here's a page from the final version of a transcript. Here's a draft version of that same page. The text box and the footer have been omitted, and here's the draft version using a watermark. You see what it's telling you there? So if you know that it's just going to be a draft, you can put a watermark on the back that says draft. So if you don't want it to get confused with anything else or whatever, um, and it kind of showed you, you know, the box around, you know. Now let's see how to works best for you. Here's a page from the... See how it has the box around it? Has the footer, you know, stuff like that. You know, and you, and you push the uh, draft. Final version of a transcript. Here's a... The draft takes it off. See? Takes it off, footer's gone. Okay? That's what it was talking about. Any questions? Hmm? You're good? Do what? <laughs> Thumbs up? <laughs> Debo? Okay, just like I was telling you before, default is always all. So once you go into print option, it automatically thinks that you want to print the whole thing. But if you don't, this is how you do it. This is your different options, okay? Let's see how to create PDF files with Total Eclipse. Total Eclipse. The Total Eclipse manual is provided in paperless form. The Adobe Acrobat PDF format has become a standard for paperless distribution of documents via email or the internet. However, you do not need to buy Adobe Acrobat in order to create PDF files for clients who request them. The Eclipse installation disk includes a free program called Qt PDF. And if you need to provide PDF files that are digitally signed, you can upgrade to Qt PDF Professional for a modest fee. However, presuming Qt PDF has been installed on your computer, here's how to use it. Open the document that will be the basis of your PDF file and begin as if you were going to print to paper. At the print dialog, use the setup button 
and drop down the list of printers that are available on your computer. Then select Qt PDF Writer. When you you understand what it's telling you right there? No. So if you want to go into, if you need to make a PDF file, which is what you send through an email or whatever, it's pretty easy to open. You know, most people like it. It's real easy. Um, it has it in the setup. So you come up here to help. I'll back it up. Come up there to help and um, includes a free. It opens up this box here. Of documents via email that has become a standard for paper is provided in paper. So you come in here, come to help, Eclipse documentation. Okay. Go into Alto right now. Everybody go into Alto and see and see if you have the uh, PDF file already listed on there. Is it? Go into Alto. Let me see if it'll do it from here. It's not going to do it from here because it's it's in the little player. And so where am I going to find? Go to Setup. Click on setup, and then where it gives you a list of the printers, oh, yeah. it has a little arrow down. Yeah, Click that arrow down. Yeah, keep PDF writer. Yes. Got it. You all have it? I don't have it. Don't. You don't? Then you need to go into the help, Eclipse document, and then go into the um, Qt PDF thing, and then it'll install it on there. Okay? Does it take long? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a second. And even if you don't have it on there, Say you go into help and it doesn't have it in the Eclipse documentation, all you have to do is go on to uh, the internet and just type up Google Qt PDF and you can, you can do it from there. And it'll download it from there too. Okay? Any questions about that? No. PDF professional for a modest fee. However, presuming Qt PDF has been installed on your computer, here's how to use it. Open the document that will be the basis of your PDF file and begin as if you were going to print to paper. At the print dialog, use the setup button and drop down the list of printers that are available on your computer. Then select Qt PDF writer. When you finish selecting Qt PDF as your printer, Hit OK and continue printing as you normally would. You'll be able to save the document wherever you want. You see what it's doing right there? You see what it did? Okay, I'm going to go through one of my documents and I'm going to kind of show you kind of how to do it and how to make a PDF file. But this is kind of how you do it. You're in the document, you press Alt O, you want to print, you go to the little setup. Drop it down. It's going to say Qt PDF. Choose that. Bring it back. It's going to say, do you want to print all of it under Qt PDF? What it's saying is you want to accept all of it. So you want to save all of it under a Qt PDF file. Yes, I do. Then it's going to bring you to a prompt right here. Usually you've already named the document. Okay? And I, I usually do. So I name it by the day or whatever. Well, when I'm through... I'll have 12 different files in that day. Well, I just want the one file. So what I do is I go through and mark it, mark the whole thing, and how do you copy it? Mark it, and then if you want to copy something and then paste it later. Control C. Control C. You get to leave early, son. You've been listening. Like that. That's what I'm talking about. Control C, okay? Then get out of that document. Go into Alt E. What does Alt E do? This is Alt E when you uh, insert. No? Edit. Edit. It's when you want to edit a job. So you want to you want to name it a different job. And I'll walk through that with you here in just a bit. But that's what you're going to do. You're going to name it in a file. It puts it in a in a PDF file. Say you want it in your documents. You choose documents. Save it as a PDF file under that and it has it under desktop. So you know where to look for it, okay, under desktop, but if you want it under documents or my recent, you can put it under whatever you want, and that's, that's where you do it. The PDF format is inherently richer than an ASCII. You notice the text box and italics and bold print all show up. 
and it's quite easy to create. All you have to do is go to the print dialog and use the setup button to select cute PDF instead of your normal paper printer. Okay. Did you understand what it was saying right there? I think where I'm still kind of lost, and I don't need to put everything back, but control C, what was that for? Okay, I'm going to go through and, and show you that real quick. Okay. Sorry, Steve. So I'm going to get out of that. <laughs> you can beat me up after the class. <laughs> Okay, Alt-E, walk through it with me, Alt-E, opens up your files. So this is all the files that I have that have already been translated, okay, they're ready to be edited, okay. So say I want to come in here to 1614, highlight it, open it, blah, blah, blah. It's going to look a little bit different because I have this thing hooked up to the projector, so it messes up all of my... Um, Markings, yeah. So what you want to do is go through and mark it. So say I want from here, the document started here. How do I mark? Steve? Usually no. Huh? God almighty. That guy should be teaching the class. If anybody knows, speak up, okay? F7 marks, okay? F7. Then you arrow down or page down. Say it's, it's 30 pages. Okay, well you don't want to just arrow down and sit there, whatever, just page down. Page down to the, to the end of, of where you want it, and then you push what? How do you copy it? Control C. Control C copies it. So you've just copied that document, now it's in the memory, okay? So now it's in, now it's in the memory. So now you come here. How do you open up a document? Alto is print. Yeah, no. Alt E. Alt E. E is edit. Okay? So now it says, you know what? Now I want to create a new document. Okay? Well, you know what? I want it to be the Hernandez case. So you type in Hernandez, press OK. It's going to give you this prompt right here that says the file doesn't exist. Well, we know it doesn't exist because I just copied it. So I know it doesn't exist. I want it to make it exist. I want to make a new file. So that's what you're doing. So you press yes again, and it brings you to, I'm not going to do it, but it brings you to a blank page. So it's going to bring you to a blank page in the document. So it's going to bring you to a page like this and there's just going to be nothing on it. And it's just going to give you a prompt up here. How do you how do you copy it into that document? Next. I guess what I'm just trying to understand is when you you're going to mark it, let's just say on line number 9. If I wanted to mark that, I'd press F7, put my cursor there, press F7. Yeah. You probably need the cursor up here because you want everything below it. If you put it here, it's going to leave the Q out. Gotcha. So you need to be above where you want to be. Okay. And then let's say if I want it to end on line 12, then my cursor needs to be at the end of the here. The end dot. of here. Okay. And then so it needs to be over here. Don't leave it here because right. then it's going to leave the period out. Right. So then at that point, I'll do control C to copy that Control section. C copies it. Okay. So I'm in a new document. I'm on a blank page. How do I put what I just copied in there? Control V. Control V. Puts it in there. V as in Victor? V as in Victor. Control. Write that down. Control C copies. Control V inserts. So that's how you create a new file.
So when you do control V, that's going to insert all that's of That's going to insert what you just copied. So whether it be the three sentences or four sentences that you just, or whether it be 160 pages of stuff, <laughs> it doesn't matter. If you it's going to put it all in there. If you have 160 pages, let's say you want to copy it all, do you have to do page, do it page by page? No, you, you do the whole control? document. You do the whole document. That's what I'm saying. And I think it's like shift page down. You can like put the cursor here. How do you how do you mark it? Uh, F7. 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 And then I think it's like shift page down takes it to the end. If you want to go to the end. If not, then you just do page down if you want to go to page 99 of page 163. Whatever. So once I've marked it, how do I copy it? Control C. Control C. Go into a different document, so I close that document. Now I want to create a new document. How do I create that new document? Is that where Control V comes in? No. I'm right here. How do I want, how do I want to create a new document? Huh? How do I open that? E. Control E. No. That's edit. Close. How do, you, how do you go into edit? Alt E. Alt E. Oh, Alt E. Alt E. So Alt E brings you to edit. It brings you to the open file, which is where you want to edit your stuff. And that's why it's E for edit. Okay? Well, now you want to create a new document. The document doesn't exist because you just copied it. So what do you do? You put the name there. Then what? Enter. It's going to tell you that the file does not exist. Well, of course it doesn't exist because we're trying to create it. So it's gonna it's gonna tell you, boom! It doesn't uh, it doesn't exist. It's gonna make this loud noise like like it did the last time, you know, where it goes H E R, and it goes it gives you this loud noise of the file doesn't exist. Well, we know it doesn't exist. So you press yes again, and it, it might tell you again that the file doesn't exist. You just keep pressing it until it brings you to a to a blank page, okay? Huh? And it does. It does. And it finally brings you to a blank page. And once you're at that blank page, how do you insert it? I would v. say control V. Control V. So it's control C to copy, control V to insert, alt E to open. All right? So that's how you do it. That's how you create a new file. Okay? Okay, guys, I think we're done for today. Um, any questions on the stuff with, that we just went over? No. Ask now. Print. Spell check, create a new file, block files. Any questions? Alt E would open a new file, right? Mm -hmm. Alt, Alt e, e is edit. Edit. But that, it, I guess it's the same thing what you're thinking, it opens <coughs> that file, that blank file. So when you want to go through, once you've created that file, that's a, that was a good question. Um, you know, she was asking, how to go into open a file, which is Alt E. So once you've created that file and you close it again, um, and you go in there, so you come into Alt D. Well, you've already created the file. You worked in the file. Well, now you're here. It's like, well, I don't see it. Well, now you do H E R, or you can do one, one that I know that's in there. S Okay, say I named it Saldana, okay? All I have to do is press S. Well, say I have 74 S's. Well, I need Saldana, so I do S-A-L. Now it's gonna bring up all the Saldanas that I have or anything that starts with S-A-L. So that's how you cut it down. Okay, you see what I'm doing? So if that's the name of the file, say you wanted the first file 
Then you come down here, highlight it, press open, it opens it. Okay? So that's how you open a file. Any questions about that? No? Good. All right, we'll see you all next week. You want